We have a uh, wonderful program for you today. You're going to hear from several speakers. You're going to hear from Dr. John Vitarello about health care. Of course, Mark Kreslins and Joshua Lyons, if we surround them, which have a new radio program on WFMD tomorrow at noon to one, The Forgotten Men. You'll hear from Sheriff Chuck Jenkins. And you're also, I am very happy and pleased to see uh, that he is in attendance. Congressman Roscoe Bartlett is here also, and you'll hear from him today. I have a, today, obviously everyone here knows where you were on 9-11. And I have a very special treat for you all, a radio legend, someone who uh, I hope to aspire uh, of being half of what he was in his radio career, a great American, a Marine, a Fredericktonian that we all love, Mr. Tommy Grunwell. Tommy, come forward, please. Thank you, Blaine. Welcome, everyone. I know, as well as you all, that this day was a tragedy and it affected Frederick County, one of our uh, own citizens who died in New York. And we think of that family as uh, all you do. I think back to uh, my family starting in the Revolutionary War to start defending this country right down to the present. I have a son-in-law who's a Navy pilot that's in Afghanistan right now on his second tour. My uh, youngest son is uh, just relieved of command. He's getting ready to go to the War College, so he has been the recently, his recent uh, job was the executive assistant, a deputy executive assistant to the deputy chief of naval operations, Admiral McCullough. And his wife is also a Navy officer, and she's teaching at the Naval Academy. They're both going to the War College next. So our family can say we've uh, been defending liberty in this country from the Revolutionary War to the present day. Sean, my youngest son, has done four tours in Iraq. His wife has done two. And uh, we had Bravo Company, the Marines from Frederick, that are in Camp Pendleton right now, training, and they get ready to leave next month for Afghanistan to replace the Marine attachment there. That's what we have, and I'm glad to see so many of you out here in the rain. Um, we were in Vietnam, and uh, they didn't stop fighting because of the monsoon. That's right. So <laughs> this is nothing. And obviously with 120 degree heat in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Marines are going through over there with 80 pounds of gear on their backs. They're not quitting either. So we need to keep that in mind. While they're over there in some pretty adverse conditions, a little bit of rain shouldn't stop us from keeping the fight. While we're standing in the rain, Congress is sitting inside, out of the rain, and that's dangerous. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. I, after 17, I have to tell you one thing. A lot of people, I came to Frederick in 1967 when the Jim Gibbons bought WFMD and WFRE. He brought me up out of Florida. Was, I came screaming and fighting that I, uh, I, I got here and had a 33-year career, and I appreciate all the people who listened to me to make it a popular one. And uh, when I was here about a month, Suzanne Twenty worked in the Frederick City courthouse, or down to the uh, city courthouse then, but it was down the city office. She said, did you know you had family that came here in 1762? Uh, I said, well, I knew they were around in Washington and Northern Virginia and all that. Well, I went down and she had this huge book, and uh, she pulled open these pages, and there, in September of 1862, I said 17, 1862, Charles Grunwell, who had a farm, apparently, my cousin went and did the research, had a farm down in Poplar Springs near Mount Airy. And he uh, registered in Frederick County Courthouse to, as an American citizen so he could fight in the Civil War. And a month later, his son came up and also registered in October of 1862. So we've been around longer than I thought we had. And it's a wonderful, wonderful city and county. And I'm so happy to share this day with so many good, honest American citizens. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. I want to let you know I started the, uh, the program out with Christopher Nussbaum because at 11 years of age, blind, 
he's got more common sense than most of the folks down there in Congress. So if it takes a blind little boy that's 11 years of age to lead the way, then so be it. <laughs>